Tonight we're going to start taking a look at graphing more, uh, more in detail. And so you're in your packets in graphing and linear relationships and we are going to start talking about slope. You've heard the word slope, well you've heard it mathematically a little bit, but you've heard it a lot even in everyday conversation. I'm going to hit the slopes, um, etc. So why do we talk about slope that way? Well, slope is really all around us, okay? It is um, measured a certain way, which we're going to talk about in a second. But if you think about these different lines that are shown, superimposed on different areas here, we can talk about the pitch of a roof or the slope of a roof, et cetera, the slope of a mountain. And one easy way to remember mathematical analogy to slope is to think about like a cross-country skier, okay? If they're going up a hill, they have to exert a lot of positive energy. When it's flat, it's kind of not a lot of fun. They're just kind of flat. Nothing's happening. When they're going down, it's negative. They don't need to exert a lot of energy. And then this would be undefined slope, okay? They are like plunging into a uh, Never, never land. <laughs> we have another um, sheet that I'll give you tomorrow that is also, it's called Ski Bird, and it is another analogy similar to this. So on your notes, um, what actually is slope? Well, this is what you're going to write down here. It's how much a line rises or falls compared to the amount it changes along the x-axis. So we're making a comparison to how far it is rising or falling comparatively to how we are moving along the x-axis. Now, there are three different boxes there. So we can represent rope slope in three different ways. First is the rise over run. You'll hear people talk about slope being rise over run all the time. The second is delta y over delta x or change in y over change in x. Okay, and the third is the slope formula, which is basically just a, um, a formula for this. So the difference of my y coordinates over the difference of my x coordinates. And we just designate that with subscripts. The symbol is m. And key element here, and this is in your notes, to write slope as a fraction, even if it is improper. Do not reduce this. It's going to make your life miserable when you're trying to figure out how to graph a line if you make it one and a half. Three halves is preferable. All right, so we read the slope of a line from left to right. And I've uploaded this demo on Edmodo, so you could play around with that. It's a math warehouse demo. But if I have a positive slope, it can look like that. Um, it could look like this, OK? It could kind of be any one of these particular diagrams similar to this, OK? Anything in this range is a positive slope. A negative slope is going to be something that's sloping downward. So anything in this range is going to be a negative slope. Zero slope is a flat line. So that's not even flat. We want to make it exactly flat, kind of a long line. And undefined slope is a vertical line. So horizontal and vertical are zero slope and undefined slope. Make sure you understand these are not the same thing. Okay, a zero slope is flat, an undefined slope is vertical. Now, finding the slope. Well, basically you just use the slope formula or you take the change in y over the change in x. So I will show you an example. Now, I will tell you that I've seen multiple errors on regions because kids just kind of forget and they put x over y. It's wrong. You have to do the change in y, 5 minus 1, and if you're going to go in this direction, you have to keep going in that direction with your x's. Okay? You can't flip-flop around wherever it's convenient so you don't get a negative. Uh-uh. That's cheating. Okay? 4 minus 2, and so I would get 4 over 2, which is a slope of 2.
Why don't you guys try the next three? I will reveal the answers, but I would like you to try them on your own. So number two was one half, three is 24 thirteenths, four is, uh, how come I had extras here? Two is one half, 24 thirteenths, oh, and two over zero, which is undefined, or no slope. We can also find the, ch the slope by looking at the graph, and that's when we're going to really focus on what is my change in y over my change in x, okay? So you have to pay attention here. If you're looking at this particular point, your change in y, you're going to start at one point and you're going to ask yourself, how do I get to the next clear point? Well, let's take this as the next clear point, okay? You're giving someone directions. Well, you have to go up. 2, up 2, so a rise of 2, and then you have to go right 1, 2, 3, 4. So right direction in math is positive, so the slope is 1 half. Try the second one on your own. Do the rise over the run. Now it could be a fall, and if it's a fall, then it's negative. So the, the rise here is negative 3 because I'm falling 3 from the first point and going one point to the right, which is positive, so that's a slope of negative 3. Make sense? All right. So let's take a look at a little bit of graphing with points and slopes. So the first one, example 6, graph the line through 0, negative 2 with a slope of 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the point 0, negative 2. All right. 0, negative 2 is here, and what I want to do is I want a slope of 2. Well, what does a slope of 2 mean? A slope of 2 means I want to rise 2, run 1. So I'm going to start here, rise 2, run 1, okay? And then I can do that again. I can rise 2, run 1. Oops, 2, 1. Or I could rise 4, run 2. Make sense? So what I want to do here is um, then attach my, whoops, it's not letting me turn this. Uh, I want to put a line through those with a straight edge, remember. No freehand drawing of lines. Give me a straight edge. And I, we will be learning how to write the equation of that line very shortly. So you will have to label it. For now, we'll just go label. Okay? Try the next one on your own. So if you're back with me, um, a y-intercept is 5. What does that mean? It's where your graph crosses the y-axis. So that point is going to be the point 0, 5. All right, so this really means 0, 5, which is this point here, and it's a fall to run 3. Fall to run 3. Okay, and then you should get a line. Okay, one more thing here. Actually, a couple more things because we're going to do rate of change too. All right, so find the missing value. So a point, um, a line passing through the points has the given slope. That's strictly algebra. All I'm saying is I want 4 minus 3 over, now I went in this direction, so I got to continue x minus negative 2 to equal 2 fifths. And you're just going to cross, multiply, and solve there. You should get, give you a little second there to finish, x equals 1 half. And then you can do the next one on your own. Pause here if you need to. And I should get 7 minus y equals 1 minus negative 3. So, so that should be equal to 4 over 1. And I'm going to cross multiply and solve that. And I should get y equals, I hope you did it on your own, negative 9. Now let's talk about slope as a rate of change. Remember that it is a comparison of different quantities. We want to know how far, if our line is the red line, okay, as I move in an x direction, oops, how much is my y changing, okay? What's happening to y as I move with x, all right? So the rate at which a distance changes with time is miles per hour. Let's take a look at another example. Find the rate of change in temperature per hour. Now I'm graphing temperature 
along the y-axis and time along the x-axis. So as each hour goes on, my temperature is going down. So all I need to do, they gave me two points, is continue on with my delta y over delta x. And so I'm going to get 15 over negative 2, which means a decrease of 7.5 degrees per hour because it's going down 7.5 degrees for each hour. See what you think about the cost of oranges. Try that one on your own. So if I look at this one, um, I actually took $2.50 minus 625 over 2 minus 5. I was bold there and dealt with the negatives. And I got negative 3.75 over negative 3, which is $1.25 a pound. And hopefully you did the same. So take a look at the next couple problems, and I'm going to let you guys do those on your own. I've taken up enough of your time. Um, so just finish those two, and we're going to talk more about slope um, just in general tomorrow and as the rate of change, and you'll get to practice that. Have a great evening.